My guest on today's show is Landon Turner. He played for the New Orleans Saints the past two seasons and is now on the Carolina Panthers roster for 2019. He played college football at the University of North Carolina where he played all four years. Landon's senior year ended as the team captain, first team All-American, and he won the Jim Parker Trophy as the best offense lineman in the country. After two years in the NFL and starting his third year for the Panthers, we discussed the differences between traveling as a college player and the NFL. We also discussed the role of being a full-time college athlete being a hindrance against getting a job or intern experiences while in college. Landon was a great guest, and I'm really thankful he gave me as much time as he did. I wish him the best of luck in the future. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. So I was just going to ask you, like, what it's like, you know, being an NFL player, but obviously... No, not a lot of stability. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <Nope. laughs> and, and even though it's millions and millions of dollars, <clears throat> not right. Yeah, it's not. So, it looks like it. I mean, there's a there's a margin of guys that are making a ton of money doing it, and then there's a bunch of the rest of us are making good money. Like, yeah, and, and pretty like really good money too. Like for like earnestly, it's still a great head start then. They are. It is not as bank account. It's not what everyone thinks it is. You think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, well, that, that's just like my, you know, my job. It's like I, I talk to uh, a couple of musicians, and you know, if they don't tour, they don't make money, even though they're doing record sales and this and that. Right. Yeah, that's you where know? they're. That's, they, they need people like buying tickets, right? That's where they get their. Yeah. They make uh, more money off venues. the tours than they do on record sales now because of all yeah. the downloads and everything. I've heard that. I've heard that. And so, so, but it, you know, in, in everyone's eyes, everybody's a multimillionaire. And I've talked to a lot of the musicians, not the lead singers, but the, right. the guys in the band. Yeah, those are it, the, those are the pregnant players. <laughs> well, you know, there, 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 there's there's let me put it in perspective. There's Cam Newton, uh huh, and then there's practice squad offensive linemen. Right. That's, right. You're on the exactly. same team. But it's a different level. Mm-hmm. And everyone mm-hmm. thinks everyone thinks football players in the NFL are, are Cam Newtons. Right, and that's you the know. perception. You know, even my own teammates in, in college are kind of overestimate how well how well I'm doing, and I'm just like, well, Wait, still good, yeah, still good, you know. But uh, not as not as steady quite yet, you know. Um, and you only get income during the season too. Right. Like I'm not getting. I'm not getting. I won't get paid again until we <laughs> go back for off season training, and that's that's like re- relative, relatively, it's like peanuts to the season pay. So you only get like that's the other. That's the other thing too. You, you got you get paid for games. During right. the practice squad, you get paid for the week that you practiced for a game. That game. Yeah. So you get paid like really paid. Uh, sixteen weeks out of the season, so like and a lot of teams will do it bi-weekly, so you got eight paychecks a year. And <laughs> it's more than enough to live on, but like yeah. when you're young, it could be tough. Like, unfortunately, you, they they warn us and you, you get you get caught, and if you're smart and listen, you, you'll be alright, but you get all this money all of a sudden, you're oh, I'm good. And then you start gone. operating off of that. And I mean, even, even smart people because uh, everyone feels that's the reality. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. I mean, I went to North Carolina. I graduated. I got a college degree, but I still felt invincible. Like you know, none of these players are immune to that to that sense of like uh, it's going to work out for me, right? So I, I I was blindsided by getting cut. I think everyone is because. In your in your own mind, and you got and you have to be to be a lead, I think. But that's kind of the that's the the tug of war is like I need to be I mentally need to to be able to perform at my best, be so confident that like I'm going to be here a while. But at the same time, you just don't know. You might not be. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's interesting. My, both my daughters graduated college uh, a year ago. Year oh, well, congratulations! That's that's a big achievement. <laughs> yeah, for a dad. Heck yeah. Yeah. And you know, it was dinner. My daughter uh, graduated from Towson back in Baltimore, uh-huh. and when she came home, and we started started going, "Hey, okay, what kind of job do you want to do?" and this and that, and I started showing her LinkedIn and 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 you know resumes and and 
you know, how to, how to look things up and find jobs and, and careers. And she's like, they should have taught me this in school. Yeah. Yeah. It's a know? severe, there's a real lack of like real world, it. like, yeah, <laughs> real world experience in, in school, you know, finances. Yeah. I started talking to my daughter the same way. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, here's, here, here are deposits, <laughs> you know, Here's money we'll never see again. <laughs> That's right. It's 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 that that would I would like to see more. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not an education like an education expert, but I feel like uh, you know the resources that we have, especially in this country, can be better allocated. But and, and like I said, you know, having two two daughters that graduate college and and one one got a job literally the week after she graduated. Uh-huh. Um, based on doing some really good internships and all that. And the other one played lacrosse at Towson and didn't have a lot of time for internships and, and school or, or, you know, for jobs. Mm-hmm. And so when she graduated, it was like, oh, you know, you can't yeah. go to a, 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 bo- a job and say, well, I know I don't have a lot of experience, but I played lacrosse. Yeah. That's you not, uh, that doesn't carry, like, team sports, it carries it carries a lot of weight, but I don't think it carries as much weight as it is, as is preached, because um, yeah. you still need like <laughs> some experience, <laughs> and that's that's the there's a, being a, a college athlete is is difficult, it's hard, it's very demanding, but like the real hard part of being a college athlete is not having the opportunity to take advantage of internships, getting to know people, and um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. No, it's all good, man. Um, I had the heat up too high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's the turn that down. Uh, it's like 19 <laughs> degrees over here. It's crazy. It's so cold. Um, I, I, won't even, I won't even tell you about my day today. Okay. <laughs> that must be worse. Uh, but the difficulty of being, like I was saying, difficulty of being an athlete, you don't get the intern, ex- intern experience and you don't get a chance to, to like, really network and, and you kind of, there's, there's no such thing as hitting the ground running yeah. um, for for college athletes, you know. Uh, I think the NFL, they have, like, they have programs, the NFLPA has programs to, like, help, help guys and, um, you got to take advantage of that, but like that's the NFL. I, I don't, I can't speak for anyone else. But even with that, it's still difficult to like. Because the real the, the struggle I've had with with all this is trying to figure out what I actually want to do with my life because I never had a chance to experience anything but football, and it had to be that way because yep. the reality of trying to chase you know such a small margin in such an elite company is you have to make sacrifices and sell out to it. I mean, you can't. Um, there's some special. There's like some very special exceptions. Like John Urschel comes to mind, for example. Like he was brilliant mathematician. He always knew what he was gonna do. Yeah, yeah. And he was really good at football. Like that. That's so rare though. Like most of the you have to you have to pour so much time, effort, and energy to just make it that it's it's nearly impossible to. Um, the, like I guess hit the ground running like I said earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then college athletics don't afford opportunities for internships. Football should, certainly didn't. We had to be there year round. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and it was voluntary. It was voluntary. With yeah, some <laughs> voluntary. Really strong quotation yeah. marks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, in this, and that's the thing. Like, you were there all summer, like for the voluntary stuff. Yeah, it's still voluntary. You don't have to show up, but if you don't, if you don't you show up. It's yeah, the, like the culture is built around demonizing yeah. kids that like want to get internships and and grow. Like, you know, your your strength coach, even though he can't like get you in trouble for it, you're still, you know, your now your reputation on the team is is scarred, and that 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 would be fanned by people. And it's not like that's no one team in general. That's just the oh, yeah. culture of football. Yeah, yeah. So it's the it's a cultural thing. Now I can't. I, I could, you could single out probably every collegiate football team, and it's the reality is they're trying to win football games, you know. And there's 
there's jobs and money on the line. Um, not so much for the actually guys actually guys playing, but well, it's no, for, but, yeah. for the system. So it's just they don't they don't want to. It's hard to afford those opportunities, and it's it really. I I think that's that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, I I just more, think that's systemic, though. I mean, that goes back. I can tell you, you know, you go back. I, I played high school through. I played football through high school. Uh huh. And I'm talking 82, 83, 84. And so I'm old. (laughs) But but, just experienced. No, I'm old. (laughs) (laughs) My daughter just called me old man, so I'm good. Um, But but, but when I played football in high school, we had zero period, which was weightlifting. So that was, was, you know, a non-class. Then first period was football, which was our our, our month our, our our morning meetings about practice okay. and and game planning and all that, and then we had sixth period, which was football, which was you know the actual practice. Mm-hmm. So I was like, when do you, when do you when do you have a job? Right. And you're already going into school an hour before school starts for weightlifting, and then you're getting. You know, and I don't think a lot of people. I mean, I don't know how it was at your your high school, but we, you know, we we had playbooks that we got every week, and all yeah. of a sudden, you know, that day you're being asked to memorize that playbook, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, you know, and then you have practice from from when at you know two two o'clock two thirty till. So I can only imagine college, especially yeah. a D one program. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you, it's it's if you get your twelve hour schedules, you're probably taking like four classes. Um, a semester, uh, and there, there's like there's subtle nuances, but you know I yeah. think it's I can probably sum up a lot of collegiate football. So you have like two or three classes a day, um, probably two, because three would be difficult because you have a workout at some point. Uh, there's usually since there's a lot of guys on the team, there's usually like three groups. You have a morning group and an afternoon group, and so you go lift in the morning or go to class or vice versa. Um, get some lunch in there when you can. Uh, then when you when you're done, like the meetings will probably start. If I remember right, the meetings started probably around three ish, you know, or maybe a little earlier. And you're going all the way till practice. Actually, it's definitely earlier. Practice started around three thirty, and that would yeah. go to six. And then, um, but you'd have meetings from like two, like two ish to a couple hours of meetings. Three hour practice. You're you're getting home at like seven, and you've been out. You've been out of the house, since, especially if you have the morning lift. You've been out yeah. since seven. You got like a twelve hour day, and it's difficult that, that, to do to do like homework, much less <laughs> see social opportunities. Plus jobs, plus, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You so know, it, 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 friends, it's family. I I agree with you that it is it is systemic, and um, it just feeds into itself. With the with the level of competition, especially the one, it's like it's always. Well, the one thing I, I I figured out as I got older, and it, it it's not a lot different in, in the business world as, you, as you're, you'll find out is to a certain extent all the coaches, you know, unless their dream was to be in the head coach of of, of North Carolina, right? right? They want yeah. maybe they want to go to the pros, so but they have to win and be successful at whatever level they're at whether they're an assistant coach, a graduate assistant coach, everyone's trying to step up. Yep. And so yep. all they care about is being able to step up. And if you're, if you decided to have a, a crappy day, well, you're not helping him step up. Right. I mean, I, I've, I've played for a lot of great coaches and they were even better men, but yeah. no matter what, no matter how good of a man you are and how how like school focused, you want to be and like you want to pour. You can want to pour it. I know I played for coaches that want to pour into us as players. Yeah. But at the end of the day, their family is still relying on them to be <laughs> successful. So yeah, no, matter, right. no matter what level of like I want to pour into is the bottom line is we need you to play football <laughs> and yeah. worry about being the best at that, and then everything else. Yeah, you know, I've had coaches that want want. The 
school and all that to come first, but it just at that level, I don't think it can. I think something's got to give. Well, it, and you know, like you said, it, you know, everyone wants to at some point. Maybe Saban doesn't. He's probably happy at Alabama, but a, a, a lot <laughs> yeah, of coaches. Yeah, I think they're doing. Right. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of coaches like you know want to be in the pros. Look at Pete Carroll, who had all the success mm-hmm. at USC. But yeah. as soon as something came up at, at Seattle, whoop, gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's really – the co- coaching is it's so different. It's so different. You know, I've, I've talked to some coaches about this. It's just so different in college than the pros. I mean, being in college, you have to, like, spend hours, like, on the road recruiting and, and um, keeping – trying to keep guys. The guys can transfer and do all that. And then in the NFL, it's a little more – there's no recruiting. It's just pure. But we got to worry about guys in college. We got to worry about guys going to class and staying eligible. Yeah. You know, in the NFL, it's just like stay out of trouble. You stay out of trouble, and we won't find you. Yeah. <laughs> like it's more. I don't know. It's just, it, it presents different challenges. Both. Um, so I know, like I say that because I know some coaches that like save, like save, and and some of the coaches I played for have like no interest in being in the NFL and vice right. versa. Some coaches have no interest in being in, in college because they don't want to uh, do recruiting or have to babysit guys. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. but that is like, it is, no matter where you're at, you got, you got to, you got to win. Well, like it, you, said, and, you got to win where you're at. In business, you know, I, I have to deal with, with people that want my job. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, I, I get, I get calls. Hey, um, if you ever leave your your company, can you make sure to give me a call? Because I'd love to step in. Like, <laughs> no, I'm good. Wow. You know, yeah. And that, although that, I will that, say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Not, go ahead, bud. Uh, I was just, I will say comparatively, that does sound nice. Is to where someone can call you and be like, oh, when you leave, let me know, as opposed to getting called in and saying, yeah, you're leaving. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Been there, done that too, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone has to at some point, no matter what the they go through. I think it's you know someone everyone goes through it in one way, in one regard or another. Well, and it's just you know I, I I've been um, in, my, in my early 30s I was re- recruited by a headhunter who you know was hired by a competing firm to go out and, and try and hire people, and uh, I was sold a bill of goods, my friend. You know, hey, if you work for them, that'd be great. More money, less uh-huh. time, more time for your family, blah blah blah. Yeah, you make the switch in your early thirties. Like, yeah, yeah, sounds great. It doesn't happen. You yeah, know? yeah. You're like, ah. but you can't go back. No. <laughs> you know, you can't. You can't go back to the company you quit from. No, they probably. They've, they've probably, already probably moved called, on. They probably called the guy. They probably called the guy. Who called you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's sad but true, my friend. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, valuable lessons that you learn in team sports, especially at your level, at the at the highest level, that will translate over to to business. Right. But like you said, what are you gonna do? I mean, you've you've done football. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I have a my daughter's friend who played. Uh, you know, she was probably like you in the sense of like. like we started coaching soccer when, when they were seven, eight, nine years old. Right. And she was just light years better than everybody else at seven, eight. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> she, she went on, made the junior Olympic team, uh, got a four year scholarship right at UC Berkeley. Um, then was drafted into the women's professional soccer okay. league. Um, and she, I think she's 20, I think she's 25 now. Right. Six, maybe. She's retired. She She's played for retired. two years. <laughs> yeah, you know, and Just it's like, like what, what? What do you do now? It's like, right? She, she's now a, a uh, I think she's trying to get her master's in, in business, and while she's coaching a, a college in St. Louis, I think. Mm-hmm. But you know, dude, she's retired. She's twenty six, twenty five. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she and she played the pros at the pro level. At the highest level, but she's yeah. never had a she's never had a job, right? She, because she's had to pour so much time into soccer. Yeah, and I used to ask her when we were in high school. I'd see her, and cause I knew I knew her since first grade, and I'd see her. I go, hey, so uh, 
what your schedule like when 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 is your next game? She goes, it'd be she, she it would be easier for me to tell you what weeks I'll be weekends I'll be home. <laughs> yeah, that sounds familiar for yeah. sure. You know, um, and like I'm and I'm sure she she could speak like a, at no point could she even figure out what she wanted to do. Nope. There was there's been no time to try anything else. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I I, talk, I saw our parents two days ago on Sunday. Uh-huh. We were out walking our dogs, and how's everything going out, Sam? Blah, 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 you know, and like yeah, back in school trying to figure it out now. <laughs> and and you, you kind of fall. The other thing too is you fall behind all your peers, and that's like that's what can make you nervous sometimes. Like I've been out of school for three years now, and most of my my friends that I graduated with and my high school friends. Um, they they're they're they've already started moving up the ladder. They're they're well past their entry yeah. level jobs, and it's like, well, what am I gonna do? And they're thinking you. And like, ideally, I'll have a long career, and like, I'll have plenty of capital to you know sit back on. But I don't know that, and you know, there's what's the contingency? Like, right. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure that out now, honestly. And I know I'm encouraged because no one ever really knows what they want to be when they grow up. My mom, uh, I'll bring up my mom, for example. She was always a, she was an exercise physiologist, something like that. I don't remember because I was young and I was just hanging out with her. It didn't really matter to me. But she was in um, she was in sports and in the, in, in the kinesiology for a long time. Um, and she she liked it. And then she started bouncing, but she didn't love it. So she started bouncing around careers. And uh, fortunately, my stepdad's, doing well, so uh, she was able to do that and kind of just figure it out, and then when I was in college, like, one day, you know, she's she in her 40s, she's in her mid-40s, and, like, she always wanted to be an actress, and she's like, you know what, I'm just going to, that's what I want to yeah. be, that's what, I'm going to go for it, you know, and, and you know, so she's in, she, she's in her 40s, and she still didn't know what she wanted to do, and now she's, she does a lot of stuff locally, I'm from Virginia, so. Uh, she was a lot of stuff locally. She'll do like commercials and extra stuff in Baltimore, yeah. and um, she actually recently picked up stand-up comedy uh, and she... loves it and loves it and is, and is awesome. having a lot of fun with it. So that's what that, I see her and, and I see other examples of that. And it's like, okay, I'll just take a breath. There's still a lot of time, and um, you got to be patient, I guess, to figure out what you really want to what you really want to do. And I, I'm gonna try to, you know, the the key is now like taking advantage of the off the off season and the off time to try and shadow and figure out like what, what's out there. Cause that's the, that's the toughest part. I'm sure the, that uh, woman with the play soccer would probably say the same thing. It's like, yeah. I don't even know what all is out there for me. Cause I haven't had any time to pursue it. The, the only advice I would give you, and, and I guess it's only because I have two daughters around you. My daughters are 23 and 25. Okay. Um, and when they, when my daughter's 23, she, when she graduated college, like the week before her graduation, we went to dinner and she went to Cal State Northridge and she okay. went the work route and she could have played lacrosse, but I'm like, she's like, I just, I just, there's no money in lacrosse once you graduate, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you're going to become yeah. a lacrosse coach, but that was not what she wanted to do. So I said, look, you know, so she went and got internships and, uh, her first internship was with a, an actor named Jared Leto. And, oh yeah, uh, and so she worked. I know with, that. Yeah, so the, he had his band called Thirty Seconds to Mars, or he still has it, I guess. And uh, so she she toured with them uh, and re- did some of their social media stuff when they were on tour. And then uh, she got to work her senior year for um, someone you might have heard of, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've heard that in uh, in certain circles for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so she spent her last six months of her senior year working for Kim as a personal assistant. And mm-hmm. when, so when she graduated, the internship was ending. And so we went to dinner and I said, look, we were at a real nice restaurant in the, in the Valley. And I said, look around. She, she goes, yeah. I said, no one in here has it figured out. Mm-hmm. And everyone has problems. So I know you're tw- she was 21 at the time, 22. And I said, no one's got to figure it figured out. I go, whether, you know, you know, Kim ain't got to figure it out. Jared doesn't have it figured out. Everyone's figuring it out, whether you're in your yeah. 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. 
you know, and it doesn't matter if you've got a hundred million dollars in the bank or or ten bucks. Yep. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate the advice. It's definitely definitely a life lesson I've been learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This year with the with the ups and downs. Um, well, I thought that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you play for the Vikings not for a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was. It's 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 been a it's been a wild ride, you know. I, I went to camp and um, I was with, I was with New Orleans for two years. Yeah. Uh, I was an undrafted free agent signing in 2016. Uh, made the roster. Was on the team that year. Played in seven games. Um, next year I came around, cut me, brought me back to practice squad. Was on practice squad the whole year. Um, and the year after that. The, this this past year, um, they the camp had a good camp, uh, but they decided to go another direction, and um, didn't really see me as versatile as some of the other guys, and decided to to cut me, and then didn't bring me back to the practice squad, um, yeah. unfortunately. So, you know, I, I've been there for two years, so my wife and I had like a yeah, we we. I felt pretty confident that I was still going to do camp. I was still going to be there. So, yeah. um, we even, I mean, we made the mistake, <laughs> made the mistake of, again, this is part of the, just the feeling invincible. It's like, I, I have got full confidence in myself to make this team. So we ran, we signed our lease because it was kind of an awkward time before we, yeah. before we knew. Um, so we like also the money on that deal, trying to get, get out of that. So that was a uh, more expensive, <laughs> than I'd want it to be. So uh, yeah. we packed up all of this stuff in a pod. It was just me and my wife. It was it was brutal. I, I like, hurt my finger pretty bad in, in camp, so it, gripping things was hard. Like, I dropped, we dropped, our drive, the very first thing we tried to move into the pod, I, I dropped and it rolled onto my finger and we broke it. And uh, it was, it was a, it was a nightmarish process. But we got it all in. Um, stayed there for, a couple of weeks, and once we got it all packed up, we headed out and went back to. We stay in North Carolina, so we had a friends of ours that one of my roommates in college. He's got a house here outside of Raleigh, and um, they put us up pretty much for the whole. I mean, for the whole season. Um, we really, we I can't. We can never thank them enough. Um, yeah, it's, it was really. I work out here in the off season, but we because we had been staying with them in the off season because they they kind of. We asked, and they were, like, really excited about it because it was cool because we got to, like, live. We were, we were, we were roommates in college, and, and uh, a lot of us are still – probably, like, four or five roommates, and all of us are still in the area. Yeah. So it was kind of like being in college again, which was which was fun. Uh, but him and his wife, they are having a baby, and it was definitely <laughs> – it was time for us to go. She's due in March, so it was time for us to obviously get out of there. And they said, as long as you guys are trying to get out um, – you can stay with us, and so that's what we did. So I was staying with them, and I was working out in my place that I work out in the off season, and uh, just waiting for calls. I had I work out with the Bills. I had work out with the they kind of run together. I had work out with the Bills, the yeah. um, Dolphins at one point, Browns, Lions. Uh, I, honestly, I'm even sure there's a few more that I don't remember. Um, and then the Saints called me back. So I was going there. I was just going in and out, um, getting workouts, getting told we're not going to make any moves today, um, getting sent back, uh, just waiting for an opportunity, trying to stay as in shape and as ready yeah. as possible. Then the Saints about midseason called me back, and I was I flew back and signed to the practice squad. And um, I was there for a week. Uh, got in there Thursday. They had some injuries and they were like worried about what they're going to do. They're going to have enough people and um, they're like, oh, well, Landon knows the playbook and he should still be in shape. Let's give him a call. And they loved it apparently. And so I'm there and I work out for the week and my God, I'm on the practice squad. And I remember Friday <laughs> getting a call from one of the pro scout guys and I already, I knew when I saw when I saw the missed call. I already knew what was happening. I started packing immediately because there's no reason he would ever call me other than to let me know that they're going to cut me. So 
I'm yeah. sorry, I'm packing and I'm calling him, and sure enough, like, yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to you. Uh, if you want to come in and talk about it, it's fine. So, did that, flew back, and then a couple of days later, I'm in Minnesota, signed me to the practice squad immediately, there for a week, and um, the next, their next week's a bye week. I get my flight home and get my return flight back, and uh, while I'm back in North Carolina, uh, I get another phone call from a Minnesota number, and I can <laughs> immediately know, like, okay, like I know what this is. So I call and I'm like, okay, and like I already, I'm just the the whole conversation. I'm just all right, like, and I kind of know what this is about. And again, I'm gonna let you go. Did you leave anything here uh, before you left for the bye week? And I was like, no, because uh, I, I just traveling. Yeah. I like to pack light, you know. Um, I hate checking bags because I don't know. Because right, I can fit about a week and with a personal item and a carry on, I can fit like about a week or a week and a half yeah. of worth of with the clothes and stuff. So, um, I was a, it might I might look the same every week, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> I look like a cartoon character because I got all the same clothes. But uh, at least I don't have to check a bag. It's it's pretty painful for me. Um, yeah, so then they let me go, and I was just just more workouts throughout the end of the year, and I ended up signing with the Panthers, and I was with them for the last two weeks of the season. Uh, yeah. And then I signed a futures reserve contract with them. So uh, I'll be with them through training camp. Uh, so I got a chance to make the team with the Panthers now. It's been a wild year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many wild. questions I, I, I'd like to ask. Yeah. 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 I got time, so <laughs> <laughs> let me know. <laughs> when, when, when you're on a, a practice squad, uh-huh. Or are you getting paid? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's um so I, I don't need to know I'm about. I just just didn't yeah, know if they were pay- asking you to do it for free. No, no they're not. Um definitely not. So you get paid different from the contracts. You get paid like per just per week and you still get paid bi-weekly, but um it's not for it's not for games. You're getting paid for the week. Right. Um and it's not I'm sure. I'm sure you can. I mean, you can negotiate anything in this world. I'm sure you can negotiate it, but they got a pretty strong. They come from a pretty strong negotiating position. So yeah, um, it's kind of set at one. Like each contract, each practice squad contract is the same. Um, the is slotted, so uh, you just get you just get paid for every, each week that you're there. Okay, and and if, are you putting? Are, wait, the question, I guess, is if you go to Minnesota, right? Yeah. You're, you're, are you in a, an apartment that's provided by the team, or is that something you have to set on a hotel on a sure. weekly basis? Yeah, no. So each each organization is independent, completely independent of each other. So, yeah, yeah. Like they, none of them do things exactly the same. There's some similarities, but everyone's different. Okay. Um, new or uh, yeah. They typically, when you come in a practice squad, I mean, they're going to put you in a hotel and they'll keep you in a hotel. Uh, just to, different teams will be cooler about it, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, than others. Um, okay. Minnesota, Minnesota gave me the, the hotel. They're like, yeah, I got you. You got this hotel for a week, and then you got to figure out a living situation what you're on your own. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was like, all right. So I ended up um, calling them and. Uh, because there was a, I was like a day over before the bye week. It was like a day over, um, and I think they, I think they went ahead and just covered the the eight days. Thanks. Right. I was leaving for the bye week, bye week anyway. Um, then, and when I was with Carolina, they they had me set through the end of the season, so they, I had the hotel through the end of the season. Um, so each team just does it differently. Uh, you're always gonna they'll they'll cover you. I mean, no team's gonna be like, all right, you know, you're here and I find a find a place to live because they might touch you. Uh, yeah, you know, at any like, time. At any time. So um, they they usually just push you in a hotel and there's just kind of how they go about it. It's just different. With each do do you try Do you try and find, like, you know, because I'm, I'm in hotels quite a bit too, you know. Uh, I spent 16 days in Vegas for the rodeo every year in, in December. Uh-huh. And then uh, – I, I was just in Denver for eight days for our sales meeting and, a, and a, another show. But mm-hmm. wait, 
if I'm only there for a few days, I'll, I don't really care where I stay. But like if I'm doing long term, you know, I'm staying at a residence inn or something that has a refrigerator and a little, yeah, you know, some kind of a kitchen, so I don't have to eat every single meal out. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I, um, I would think that'd be important for. Yeah, it is. It definitely is important. So I didn't have this year. I didn't have, like have that situation so much because uh, I, I was covered by the Vikings and the. Everybody was at was not there okay. long enough for for it to be for me to have to get my own place. Okay. Um, but with the Vikings, I, I was like the Vikings is the closest I got because I was anticipating coming back, and when I came back, I was anticipating having to be somewhere. So um, I was just looking for you know extended stays was kind of the was kind of the easiest. Um, yeah. I would like I would like scout. I would just keep looking at the race for this. It's just an extended stay, so I can have like that kitchen, like you were talking about, um, and Airbnbs. And a friend of mine that he, he would literally just he would Airbnb hop every week, and it wasn't the worst situation. He didn't have like you know he had like a like me he had like a week's worth of stuff, and yeah, he would just go to a different house, you know, do his laundry, and it always like. The biggest thing is I don't, you don't want to sink a bunch of money into an apartment, and, and like, especially one that's not furnished. And the furnished apartments are that are already furnished are usually more expensive than you want to spend on. So um, I was I, like, after looking, I was either going to lean on Airbnb or extended stay. Um, so when I when I go back to Charlotte to report for OTAs and all that, um, it's actually a fortunate position. It's only a couple of hours away from. Where I'm staying, or wherever, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, and my wife works in Chapel Hill, which is only like five miles from Durham, so where we're staying. So she, uh, we're just gonna keep. She's gonna keep her job, especially since I'm here. And um, when I'm going to OTAs, I can come back for weekends, and then when the season starts, she can come down. She's off on Sundays and Mondays, so she'll come down for the game and then hang out in the after. We'll kind of do that, do it that way. But um, yeah, see, that was what I was gonna ask you. Was my next thing was, you know, how do you deal with? being married, you know, and, and presumably newlyweds, you know, in the last yeah, three, so four, or five be, years, whatever. Years. It'll be two years yeah. in, Mar- in uh, oh. March, so and, and, so we're definitely she, still new. <laughs> she married a football player, so she kind of knew. It's like my, my, my wife, my new, you know, I got divorced, now I have a new wife. My my wife now married somebody that traveled for, for a living. So uh-huh. she kind of knew going into it, hey, here's what, here's my schedule, here's what I do. But how's your wife dealing with it, the, the uncertainty of the league? Um, it, <laughs> I guess well, <laughs> it, 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 it's been tough. I mean, the the first year, my first year in NFL, we were in, we were engaged. We didn't get married until after my rookie year, so um, that wasn't that that wasn't difficult because you weren't know, yeah. married yet anyway. Um, she was working and I was doing my thing and uh that that next year it was uh, when I got cut initially it was kinda of like nerve wracking but then I picked back up on the practice squad so we um kinda of, kinda of stable. I I made enough that she had to like she had to work too much. She's kinda of just got to chase her um wedding planning and she wants to be a wedding planner so she was channeling people in the in New Orleans which is a pretty pretty good city, city to to be yeah, that's with, my with that's my oldest players. daughter is my oldest daughter is doing that right now. Oh, nice! Yeah, the one that graduated great, from Towson. Yeah, yeah, I I love it so much. Um, we don't always have a special place in our hearts, and we'll definitely be traveling back to it throughout time. But um, this this year this year has been tough because you know she hadn't had she hadn't had a job, and then I lost mine. It's like, well, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Um, and she needed some. Experience and with what we're going to be, I mean, our base is going to be North Carolina anyway. I still have a lot of contact. I played at the University of North Carolina, so sure. I had some contacts. And I gave her a number of a guy that, uh, a good friend of mine that, I, that knows a lot of people. And I was like, let's hit him up and see if he knows anyone. She's going to get a job as a banquet manager um, for uh, the, the Carolina Club, is what it's called. It's kind of the work events. I, I, to be honest, I'm not as privy as. <laughs> Yeah. I just, she just does her job, and I like smile and wish. I'm like, doing great. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear it. Um, so she's 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 doing that, and it's it's just kind of it's just kind of stressful because I'm going 
I'm gone. I'm, I'm not. I don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, she, she's like she's always got my back, and she's she feel she's feeling what I'm feeling, right? So um, yeah. every every disappointment I'm going through, she's going through, and uh, I mean, you know, being married, you got to you got to share the burden. Um, and and for work. Work. <laughs> when I, when I, when, it was it was the hardest when I got cut and then I didn't get brought back. It was just because you know she sees all of it. You know she's yeah. she's right here with me. She sees how much um, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. She sees how much it hurts. She sees how much I poured into it. How much effort. Um, you know, she, she's like the one person that you do a lot. You have to do a lot on your own when you're you have to put so much time and effort and sacrifice a lot of things. And she's seen all of it, not just what's on on the yeah. screen or on the field, you know, so um it, that that hit us pretty hard and, and just a just a difficulty and like the long road that was ahead. Um and just just the embracing the adversity. So just the, the uncertainty of it is, is difficult and, it, and it's gotta be hard. I mean fortunately or unfortunately fortunately, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> we don't have kids, you know, like I can't imagine I can't imagine having kids through this through this process, you're getting up and moving, you know, and, and there's a lot of guys that do. Hell yeah, and, um, I'm telling you, one of the strongest women, strongest wives that are out out there are, are NFL wives. It's, you know, they're they got they're trying to raise kids, and they could be in New Orleans one day, and then now they're in Buffalo, New York, and oh, uh, next year they're in you know Los Angeles, California. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just oh, it can be a lot, you know. Um, but we we I think we've handled it pretty well. We've We've been uh, mostly uh, mostly positive through all of this, and yeah, um, yeah. we've but, grown a lot from it for sure, for sure. Yeah, that, that, like I said, and this is exactly what I told my daughter was, hey, no one got it figured out. Yeah, you that's know. right. That's right. So, it's, it's life. That's that's the cool part about you know the harp. And I traveled not not quite as much, but my kids were still in high school when I started this job, and I was traveling. I, I hit. And I hit like thirty or thirty five states in just a couple of years. Oof. And then all my and then all my in between travel, you know, which is, you know, California and, and Hawaii. So it, it it was a lot of traveling, but you know, my girls were a little bit older so they, they kinda understood it and, and mm-hmm. I would I would bring pictures back or you know for me my you know, the name of the show is Travel Wins because when I when I go out on the road I used to just say, hey, you know, like if I'm going up to San Francisco for a week, you know, and hit all my stores up there, if I if I if I don't make my money, it was a bad week, mm-hmm. and so I, it was just that's a lot of stress, you know. Yeah. I so know, I, yeah. I, I I tried finding things, you know, and I'm, I go up to, to I want to see the Bay Area, maybe I'll go see an aquarium, maybe I'll go see a museum, maybe I'll go to a car show, maybe I'll go to a concert. You know, and I'll try and find other things to do outside and try and make while I'm out on the road as normal as possible instead of just sitting in my hotel room going, shit, I, yeah. I got I to gotta sell $5,000 tomorrow just to break even. And then if I, if I don't, you know, you know, for me, that's just how my brain works. So I'm always analyzing. And uh, so I try to find, try and find things out on the road to do and, and find wins outside of just did I, did I make enough money or not? Yeah. So, and ever yeah. since I started doing that, I've made more money. So I'm not focused <laughs> on it. Yeah, that's, uh, I hear you. I hear you. That, that makes sense to me. Like, it's, it's similar in football. Um, yeah, yeah. I think less about making money, but, like, Staying directly. On but, like, if you if you get caught up worrying about, man, like, I might get cut. Like, yeah. like where, am I, where am I at in this depth chart? Like, that it's it's a it's it's really what it is, just wasted mental energy and it's toxic and the ironic part is the less you focus on it the better you perform. Just yeah. and I believe that not just football, but that's I've seen it in football, but that's just that's just life. The less you focus on these negative factors that especially the ones that you can't control. You know, I mean you can't it'd be awesome if you were a salesman, you could tell it like you can just make people say yes and buy stuff. <laughs> that's how, oh yeah, that's not how it works, you know. So, um, no, it, much, it would be awesome to, to, to show up and just tell the coach that you're on the team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, but it's just not how it works. You can't. You can only control so much. So, um, and the more you're like focusing on the things you can't control, the less, the less you get, the less output you're getting from yeah. the things you can. Yeah, and, and 
it, it took me years. I mean, I, and yeah, like I said, I played, I played football for 10 years and then, you know, I wrestled and did a whole bunch of stuff, but I didn't learn until probably my thirties, mid to late thirties that I need to, I got, I got to have something else to think about. Yeah. Cause I yeah. was just, I was so game oriented. So every time I, you know, you go into a sale, it's like a game. Yeah. And, it's like, did you win or lose? You know, and so I already knew the number going into every every account, how much I needed to sell mm. to break even or, or make money. You know, yeah. So it's and just, then it was just it's hard to I, I imagine it's harder to sell and be, you know, it's definitely a, a, a person in you know, the people person's industry, and if you're stressed out, um, it's harder to it comes off in that groove. Yeah, it comes it comes out, and people can see that. Um. Yeah, you know, I think people are very intuitive and perceptive. Um, it's harder to be genuine when you're stressed because you're focused on the numbers, not the person. Yeah. So, it, and like I said, my sales have literally gone up ever since I've started coming up with different different ways to make wins. You know, whether it's you know, I do a lot of driving, and uh-huh. I don't know if you how much time you spent in California or Los Angeles, but LA traffic is a little bit different than other parts of the world. <laughs> um, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. I got some family that lives out there. I've visited them. And then we played. We've had joint practices uh, with the Chargers the last couple of years. So I've. Uh, but we fortunately, I mean, I haven't driven in it, but I, I've. Yeah. Because when I mean, we're so there for the terrible. week, I get to visit my family, and it's they come, and it's like they're, they're a couple, of, like ten miles away. It took them like forty minutes, fifty minutes to get there. It's like, oh, yeah. All right. I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm Larry. I'm 20. I think I'm 21 miles from like Sunset Boulevard and you know all uh-huh. the fun stuff. Yeah, that's an hour and a half to two hours. Whew. You know. Yeah, that's true. It's, tw- it's 21 miles. Yeah, that's that's pretty so, insane. <laughs> but but so I have a lot of time to, to 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 think, and so you know, just for me to get out of my territory, it's an hour and a half to get out, and then you know, like I said, San Francisco's you know seven eight hour drive. It's just right. a lot of time to to think about. You know, I, I would assume it's kind of like if you're sitting on an airplane. You yeah. Know, you just got, you got a lot of time to think about the game and this and that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, know, and you travel the day before, so. Yeah. You got the whole you got the whole night usually to think about think about yeah. the game. And the next day, night games are the worst. Night games are the worst because you get you like you have this huge you have this huge event coming and it's just sitting at the end of the day and it seems like time just creeps. Yeah forward to, towards it you gotta like calm yourself because you're for me you're excited you're anxious you gotta deal with all those emotions and like kind of guide them and direct them and like let them peak at the right time you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely yeah you know, and, and then and then you have to travel at night it's, like, it's just an away game yeah yeah well that's why I usually all travel days in football always the day before so usually you get to, i mean you get to wake up and um there's no, there's not other than traveling to the stadium on game day. Usually, there's no, no flights or anything. The flight after you leave, we usually, unless there's like a, a special circumstance, like you leave right after the game. Like you, yeah. the team will go right on the plane and take off. I know, but that's not saying that if you had the night game, if you had the, the, the Sunday night game or a Monday night football yeah. game, you know, and you're out oh, of yeah. different time zones too. Yeah, so the time zones. Times are tough. I heard I've heard that it's harder to go west to east than east to west. Um, I'm I not, not agree sure more with you. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't think I've done it enough to really be affected by it, but I, I believe it. I believe it. Hey, yeah, I mean, you know, when, when I have to go, like Denver's only an hour, but like if I go back to Ohio or um, you know, the, the furthest east I've gone so far uh, was I actually we opened up a store in Winston Salem. Okay. And, uh, okay. So I flew, yeah, flew into Charlotte. Right? Yeah. So I flew into Charlotte and then drove up to uh, Winston Salem. Stayed there for, for four days. Um, and then I took an extra day and went up to Virginia and I actually made it all the way up to West Virginia just because I'd never been there. And uh, <laughs> and so, but it's three hours. So yeah. You know, if if I'm supposed to wake up at six, it's yeah. really three in the morning to me. Yeah. Three. Yeah. And it's, oh. it, that that I imagine was, especially if you're especially to the body clock, man. That's that's a real, that's a very real thing. Yeah. So when you're trying to get up at six, your body's like, hold on, 
It's a 3 a.m., my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, I'm, you know, as you'll find in business or whatever, I'm supposed to go out to dinner with my, my clients. Oh, man. Hey, so, to, <laughs> like, you know, you're going I mean, off of, like, <laughs> with a couple hours of sleep for you and you try to keep to you. It should be, uh, I, I can imagine that would be difficult. The, the, the worst one I ever had, man, was uh, I flew into Toronto. I worked for a company. This was, I was probably 30, 31, and uh, I ended up working for a, a company, and they're based in Toronto, Canada, which uh-huh. is three hours' time difference. And so I, they're like, hey, you need to come meet the owner of the company and go do the factory tour and do all this. I'm like, all right. And so I took the red eye, which was like leaving at midnight. Oof. <laughs> or it was okay. 11.30. And, you know, it's a six-hour, or it was a, a five-hour flight. So we got, Man. I had it at 5 a.m., which was 8 a.m. in Toronto. So guess what? Right from that flight, we went directly to the office. Oh. And I'm like, oh, yeah. whoa, I thought we were going to go to a hotel and I can shower. And like, no, no, it's, 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 we're open for business. It's time to go to work. I had to work that entire day, and I was I was zonkered. I was completely out of it. I imagine, I imagine it could be hard to sleep on planes too. So I, I bet you, you yeah, get like at the time I've been on a lot of planes, so I was excited. You know, it's like I guess it'd be like going to the Super Bowl. You know, where you're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, I've never done it. Something I've dreamed. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to Toronto. I've never been to Canada before. I've never, you know, I'm, I'm meeting the owner of the company. So I literally had no sleep. I slept for maybe four or five minutes on the plane. I go and meet the owner. And, <laughs> yeah, I'd just been promoted to general manager, and the VP of sales had promoted me up to general manager. So I had no sleep. I'm exhausted. I meet the owner of the company. And I'll say, the, what's the worst thing a, a boss can tell you? It, it, imagine going into uh, your, your – is, is Rivera still the coach of the Panthers? Yeah, yeah, we're very still Imagine you, your first day of practice, and, and you've never met him before, right? Yeah. You go in there, and he goes, "Why should I hire? You? Why should I hire you as as my office alignment?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, right. that would be, and then you have to come up with a intelligible response. Yeah, that would be that would be difficult. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I, in my head, I'm like, hold on, I, I have the job, right? Or oh, does man. he not? Hold on. Do I not have the job? What? Oh, man. That, that would definitely help me for a loop. I, I look over it. at the guy that hired me, and I'm like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, man. sir, I'll do a great job for you. I'm going to give you everything I have. Yeah, I was a sales manager and for you. But, you know, I understand the problem. Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, I don't know if I'm sold yet. You got one day to make me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, you know, man. I, I, I had two small kids. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I thought I had the job, my friend. I thought you were just coming to say, wanted me to come say hi. Man. So, but he kept yeah, me on my toes. Sounds, yeah, there's no doubt about that. That's one way to put it. Goodness gracious. Yeah. That's, so. kind of, that's the perspective of, of that with Rivera. That definitely, uh, definitely not. Fortunately, it was not like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For me. For me. I was, I, they did actually call me at, like, that's the other thing. You can get called at, like, any time. For, for teams, I I got called by they used to get me called at 8 p.m. that Tuesday it was a Tuesday. They called me at 8 p.m. like, hey, uh, you guys want to sign you? Um, so you ready to go? And I'm like, uh, okay. And then I get a call from them and they're like, so you want to leave for like, you're you're in Raleigh, right? I'm like, yeah, you want to leave tonight or early tomorrow morning? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> well, I didn't like I didn't want to get caught in any kind of traffic, so. Yeah, they called me at nine o'clock, and I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll, I'll leave tonight." And I get the address to the hotel, and I threw a bag together and and drove down. That was, and I got there at like one o'clock in the morning. Turn around, had to be up at six for to go to the get the physicals done so I could get to practice on time. And I, that was a long day for physical. But, but that was a good drive, though. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's two it's two and a half, it's two and a half hours, so it wasn't it wasn't. No, but I mean, awful. you were in a good mood when you were doing yeah. that drive. Oh, I was in a very good mood. Yeah, I was in a very good mood. <laughs> I was very happy to do such drives. No yeah, exactly. Um, you you were dancing in your car on yeah. that trip. And unlike unlike the other teams, which the, the nice part was, I had my I could just take my truck with me. So when I was packing, I didn't have to be nearly as like careful. I just like yeah threw a bunch of my clothes in the bag and then. 
whatever else I wanted to take, I was able to just keep in the trucks, threw that in there, and pulled it out. Yeah, I was like, when when I when I go into different towns and get a rental car, I, I have Jeep Cherokee at home. So when I get a Jeep Cherokee when I'm on the road, I'm like, yes, I'm in a car yeah. I'm comfortable with. I knew where all the switches are. I knew where all the, I knew where everything yeah. is. That's cool. Oh, okay. So, so let me ask you this question: What when when you're traveling, um, but what? What advice did you get or would you give to somebody coming into the league as far as the traveling part of, of being a professional football player? Um, well, I think I can't really – I mean, when it comes to – when you're with a team, everything's just – everything's handled to the point where it's spoiled and, like, like none of us are really good adults. None of us are NFL players. <laughs> yeah. Because we haven't had to really adult yet. Um, and, and so bear with us, you know, if you're ever dealing with us because we – We've we've been kind of coddled a little bit, um, but what, the advice I can give is like when you're when you're struggling or if you get um, cut and you're like just fighting looking for another team, uh, the I think it's less travel advice and more just like I it is, it is travel advice. Just find what where you're gonna be at and just have a just have a home base to operate. Um, figure out like. You know, figure out what your support system is somewhere yeah. something that's going to make you like keep you comfortable. That um, with people around you that can keep you motivated. Because uh, you don't, I mean, you don't have a job, and like, but you, if you want to keep chasing football, you got to keep chasing it. You know. Yeah. I, I was looking for, I was looking for some jobs. I, I worked in a warehouse, um, delivering kitchen uh, appliances and. Uh, Kitchen and bath appliances. Um, yeah. Great company, great people. Love them, love them to death. Uh, I only worked for a day because the Saints called me like a couple of days after that. <laughs> um, but I just, I mean, I worked there. It's like I, I just, I think it's. I didn't want to do that. And I think if you, if you, unless you're really like desperate, um, you know, we had saved most of our money, so we were still doing all right. You just gotta kind of sell out to it and just be ready to go. Um, be ready to go, and then you, have a backpack. Um, like be, ready, ready. Be, be mobile. Yeah. Be ready, ready. Be mobile. I didn't check a bag because, you know, I didn't know if they were going to keep me or not. And right. it just made traveling easier. Um, you can go to, like, TJ Maxx or something, anywhere, Walmart or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Grab one of those. I grab one of those hard case uh, carry-ons. And you can, I mean, it's like I, I got as big as I can, but you, you can push the limits a little bit and, uh, worst case scenario is they check it at the gate, but then you know it's you know it's going to be going with you. Um, and yeah, that it's that's really that's really all I can say. No, I uh, like when that. It comes I mean, to, yeah, having a having a bag packed and being ready. I mean, oh yeah, I always had it on standby. If you never, you just never know. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it and it happens for me a couple of times. You know, I get calls it. Three or four in the morning, uh, three in the, not the morning, but in the afternoon. And I was like, "Hey, uh, all right, the Titans want you to come now." I said, "Okay, I'm ready. Let's go." Yeah, definitely. Um, at, at, at all times, and um, just being ready to travel. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, you, you never know. I, I I didn't have to go very far. Um, I think my furthest distance that I had to work out was Miami. So. Yeah, that's that's, that's, uh, that's not that's bad though. Advice. Stay ready. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad. And it's, the unfortunate thing is, like, I mean, as soon as like uh, you, you go in that, you fly in that evening. There's never time to like be able to explore these places when you're getting worked out. Because they call you in the afternoon, you fly in that night, you go to the hotel, you need to sleep because you're gonna get up early and do to have a job interview. So you're not yeah. gonna go out and visit Miami, um, and then. Uh, also, although I want to, I will add this. Here's here's some advice. Don't get in the wrong vehicle um, when you're traveling. <laughs> that actually happened to me in Miami. I <laughs> got off the plane. I walk out to the baggage claim, texting the guy who's supposed to pick me up from the Dolphins, and he says he's in a silver expo. So oh. I'm thinking, okay, you're in a silver explorer. Sweet, got it. Um, I go outside. This guy pulls up in a silver explorer. And like, kind of like leaning out and like, kind of waving. He said something, and I was like, "Yeah," and I just just jumped in. Um, <laughs> the craziest thing, like, whoever he was picking up was there for some like 
he's there to see, like, for some medical reason. I, we didn't know, obviously, but, like, he just knew all he knew is that the guy was there to see some doctor. So everything I was saying, because it was sports-related, fit his questions. And it wasn't until I asked him, so how far is the hotel, <laughs> that he realized that something was what? wrong. And he was like, wait, are you Daniel? I was like, oh, no, I'm not Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, fortunately, we were only, like, you know, maybe – seven, ten minutes out, outside of the airport. But he just turned around, brought me back, and uh, called the guy he was supposed to pick up. And was like, yeah, I ran into a little problem, uh, but I'm going to be right there. <laughs> Dude, that's, the, that's, yeah. that's, the, guy ended up, the guy who was picking me up was driving a Silver Expedition and not an Explorer. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, come on, man, it's, it's Expo, Expo feels like Explorer. I don't know. It was way, so we laughed about it. Um, Dude, that's one of the best birds I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like it, was, it just felt, it felt like something that only I could do. Only I could do. Get in the wrong get in the wrong vehicle for especially for a workout. I mean, the guy wasn't wearing for anything. The day. Don't he wasn't get wearing the wrong anything. car. <laughs> oh man, he wasn't wearing anything. Dolphins. That should have been my first clue. Um, it, the car was like a little older, you know. And usually the the company vehicles yeah. like nice they, keep, they have a they have a contract, so they're usually like the new vehicles. Yeah, everything. Guys, everything wear, guys wearing a Jaguars jersey or something. Yeah, and like when he yelled at the car, he he did yell Daniel. I just, I just. You didn't hear it. Was, yeah, it was bad. It was just, it was a bad look, and uh, they didn't end up signing me. And I wonder how much of it is that story because uh, I probably shouldn't have told the guy that story. So it's just kept it myself. <laughs> no, no, that's a good story, my friend. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that one. That's cool. Hey, is it, what's the best way for my, my listeners to, to follow up with you? Yeah, or uh, social media or Twitter. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Social media. Um, my, I got a I got a LinkedIn. I don't know what the ad is, honestly. It's just yeah, yeah. Search Liam Turner. Um, I have a Twitter that I'm like semi active on. Uh, it's at e l underscore t e e underscore seventy eight. I made it when I was in college. So deal with it. <laughs> you, you're not the real LT, but I'll let you slide on that one. That's true. That's why I spelled it phonetically. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I have an Instagram at uh, at Landon Lewis L E W I S Turner, all lowercase, all one word. Um, so yeah, if you have questions or something, you got, anybody has questions, you can you can DM me. Uh, you know, I, if I don't have it, I can probably direct you to someone who. Is better yeah. equipped to, to answer it. Um, yeah. Well, I appreciate the time, man. That's uh, yes. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I really, I did. I, I, thank you for having me. No, no. You know, and, and uh, I'll definitely keep keep an eye out for you. And uh, you, you now have a new Carolina Panthers fan for as long as they keep you. Oh uh-huh, yeah, appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. Keep pounding. You got it. Yeah, best yeah. of luck, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the time, man. Have a good one. All right, thanks, Landon.